With the GP market currently being in a state where it is difficult to get cards at MSRP, I have been getting a lot of use out of my integrated graphics. In this video, I take a look at the integrated graphics solution of Arrow Lake. Architecture The Intel Arc graphics tile found inside of Arrow Lake is built on TSMC's N5 node and offers a massive improvement over the XCLP-based iGPU that was in the last generation Raptor Lake CPUs. The integrated graphics in Arrow Lake has full support for DirectX 12 Ultimate, which means that you can even enable real-time ray tracing on this GPU. The Arrow Lake integrated graphics is based on the XCLPG graphics architecture, which was first introduced with Intel's Meteor Lake. Desktop Usage For desktop use, this integrated graphics suits my use case very well. I have the integrated graphics hooked up to two 1440p high refresh rate monitors. One monitor is set to 240Hz and the other is set to 120Hz. And the integrated graphics drives both at their maximum refresh rate which makes the desktop experience very good for my dual monitor setup. It is very nice to have an integrated graphics solution that can handle all my daily computing needs without having to have a discrete GPU. Capture Card I have an Avermedia capture card and the integrated graphics works pretty well with it. It uses quick sync video, which is nice to see. The capturing experience seemed a little better when I had an RTX 4070, as there was some choppiness to the capture on the iGPU when using my old settings. But after some settings tuning, I think the iGPU works very well with this capture card. Capturing at 1080p60 seems to work great for me on the Arrow Lake integrated GPU. I use this capture card so that I can get consoles output to my desktop, and in my experience, Playing games through the Avermedia software works good enough for my needs, even in fast-paced console games. PC Gaming With an integrated graphics solution that is around the level of last-gen consoles, you have to be realistic about the types of games you play and the settings you choose. As such, I have been sticking to older games. I recently played through both Red Elk games, a racing series made by 34 Big Things. In Red Out Enhanced Edition, I set the resolution to 60% of 1440p and had a mix of medium to high settings, and the frame rate in the game was usually around 80 FPS, with it often going higher and sometimes dropping a bit below. It was still a nice experience for me to play through the entire game. I also played a bit of Red Out 2, which supports XCSS. In this game, I turned the resolution down to 1152p and use XCSS Performance Mode in order to have a smooth gaming experience. In Street Fighter 4, the benchmark ran at maximum settings with 8x MSAA and easily exceeded the 60 FPS required for a smooth gaming experience. If you run Killer Instinct on the stock GPU, you will have to turn it down to the Xbox One S resolution of 900p to pass the benchmark. So at stock, this integrated graphics setup is on par with the last generation console. But with the integrated GPU overclocked by 25%, with DDR5-8200 RAM, the Killer Instinct benchmark can be passed at 2160 by 1215 a resolution that is higher than any of the last-gen base consoles. That is a win for the integrated graphics over the base consoles of last generation. Upscaling You have several upscaling options when using ARC graphics. The ones built into games that you can use are XCSS and FSR. Though the iGPU in Arrow Lake is on an XE architecture, it is lacking XMX units. So it is using the DP4A path when upscaling using XCSS. Despite this, in my testing, XCSS still produces superior virtual quality compared to FSR. Though some games only support FSR. So in those cases, FSR could still be useful. But when possible, I think it is best to use XCSS on this GPU. Emulation I have tried this iGPU in modern emulators such as RPCS3. In RPCS3, I'd say that it works very well, depending on the game. 
The shader compilation process is very quick, and I experienced no crashes during shader compilation. In several games, I was able to run at my native resolution of 1440p while maintaining a steady target frame rate. Here is MotorStorm Pacific Rift running at native 1440p, and the GPU utilization is usually between 60 and 80%. The gameplay experience is very enjoyable, despite the console tier 30 FPS frame rate. When I play old games like those from the PS3, I prefer playing them on my PC, since I am able to enjoy many of them with a higher resolution, and some games even support higher frame rates on the PC if you modify some settings in the emulator. In Heavenly Sword, for instance, I am able to run at a 60 FPS target on the integrated GPU. 2x the frame rate of the PS3, and at 2560 by 1440, this is 4x the resolution of the PS3's 720p. Overclocking The results shown in this video are for my overclocked iGPU, which is currently running at 2500 MHz. That is a 25% increase over the 2 GHz stock frequency. I have also undervolted the iGPU by 60 millivolts. Next, I will compare some benchmarks showing the performance difference of 6400 mega transfer per second memory with the iGPU at its stock 2 GHz frequency versus my setup with 82 mega transfer per second memory and the iGPU at 2.5 GHz. It is an interesting comparison since I can then get an idea of the kind of performance improvement I am getting out of this overclock. How much of an improvement can a 28% increase in memory and 25% increase in graphics core clock give me? In Shadows of the Tomb Raider, at 1080p lowest, the iGPU at stock with 6400 XMP memory results in an average FPS of 43. Lowering the resolution to 900p increases the score to 53 FPS. With the memory speed set to 8200 and the iGPU core overclocked to 2.5 GHz, the average FPS at 1080p increases to 54, an improvement of 26%, and at 900p, the FPS average increases to 67, another 26% increase. In Borderlands 3, at 1080p low, the iGPU at stock with XMP memory, the average FPS is around 52. With the resolution lowered to 900p, this improves to over 64 FPS. With my overclock and tuned memory, this increases to over 65 FPS at 1080p, which is slightly higher than the stock iGPU at 900p and 26% higher than the stock 1080p result. Reducing the resolution to 900p, my overclock averages over 80 FPS, which is also close to a 25% increase over the stock result and Guardians of the Galaxy at 1080p low. On the stock XMP setup, the average FPS is 30. At 900p, this increases to 36 FPS. On my overclocked and tuned memory setup, that improves to 37 FPS at 1080p, again faster than the stock result at 900p, and 23% faster than the stock result at 1080p. At 900p, the average FPS increases to 45, a 25% increase over the stock setup. For Forza Horizon 5, I am testing at 1080p using XCSS performance with low settings. The stock setup scores an average of 58 FPS, while my overclocked setup scores an average of 72 FPS, a 24% increase. And finally, for Batman Arkham Knight, I am using high settings. And in the benchmark, the stock setup scores an average of 40 FPS at 1080p and 48 FPS at 900p. With my overclock setup, this increases to 51 FPS at 1080p and 65 FPS at 900p. This is a massive improvement and the biggest increase in the games that I benchmarked for today's video. At 1080p, that was a 28% increase in performance versus stock and at 900p, this grows to a massive 35%. My overclock consists of a 25% clock increase for the integrated graphics and a 28% clock increase for the DDR5 memory. Combined in actual benchmarks, this typically results in around a 25% increase in performance. 
but I saw one case where the performance uplift was 35%. Getting around 25% extra performance for graphics is pretty big. That is more than a generational improvement for some graphics cards in recent years. And is enough for me to say that the Arrow Lake Integrated Graphics is a great overclocker. 25% extra performance will for sure be noticeable in many games, as my numbers show that the overclocked card at 1080p is typically faster than the stock iGPU at 900p. Efficiency In terms of power consumption, I have a wall meter that can record power figures in games for my entire computer. The most I've seen my entire computer, including CPU, motherboard, integrated GPU, RAM, six fans on four storage devices, the power consumption is a little over 100 watts in demanding games. But if you are playing less demanding titles, I've often seen the power figures under 100 watts, which is pretty nice. Idle efficiency is around 50 watts. So an extra 60 watts from idle to max out the processor in gaming is pretty impressive in my opinion. The power results you are seeing now are from Forza Horizon 5 using XCSS performance while running the benchmark. The overclocked and undervolted system seems to be using around 10% more power, but my overclock is providing over 20% more performance. So in terms of efficiency, my undervolted overclock is a bit more efficient than the stock integrated graphics setup. High refresh gaming. As someone who recently upgraded to a 240Hz OLED monitor, it would be nice if this integrated graphics could play some games at 240Hz. So I tried it in several older and less demanding titles. Turret Remastered recently got an update which allows high refresh rates, and I am happy to say that this game can run at 240Hz at 1440p on my overclocked Arrow Lake integrated graphics setup. It's not a perfect 240 frames per second, but I played through the whole game and the experience was great. If you stick to lighter games like Cat Quest, you can get a 240 frames per second experience. So yes, 240 frames per second is possible on this integrated GPU if you stick to certain titles. Issues To get Batman Arkham Knight and Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy to run, I had to do some extra steps. For the Steam version of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, the fix is simple enough. Just add minus shared VRAM to the launch options and it will allow you to run the game on a modern Intel graphics like the one found in Arrow Lake. For Batman Arkham Knight, the fix was a little more involved, but it's still a very easy fix. I headed over to the PC Gaming Wiki and saw that I needed to download a file to make it work on Intel GPUs. The file is called Batman Arkham Knight Intel GPU Detection Fix. The file is less than 1 MB in size, and after following the instructions given in the PC Gaming Wiki, it works. The only issue I have run into that I haven't solved yet is in OutRun 2006. In certain stages like Casino Town and a few others taking place at nighttime, there is an issue where graphics are not rendered properly. Very strange, but I consider this pretty minor since there are only a handful of stages where this occurs. Stages that can easily be avoided when playing, but it would be nice if this issue was fixed. Though. I won't hold my breath given this game is no longer being sold on Steam. In the end, I am very happy with the integrated graphics performance of the Arrow Lake iGPU. My motherboard offers both HDMI and DisplayPort, which allows me to use the integrated graphics on both my 1440p high refresh rate monitors. I have a 4K capture card which allows me to capture gameplay from consoles and other HDMI devices and the capture card works well with the integrated graphics after adjusting capture resolution down to 1080p. With just one XC LPG render slice, this integrated graphics solution is drastically faster than the Raptor Lake integrated GPU. Tech Power Up found the iGPU to be around 2.4 times faster than the integrated graphics of the fastest Raptor Lake CPU. That is a massive generational improvement. And Tech Power Up was only using 6400 mega transfers per second memory. I, on the other hand, am using 8200 mega transfers per second memory, which is 28% higher than what Tech Power Up used. And I have overclocked the iGPU by 25%. So I wouldn't be surprised if my results 
were 20 to 25 percent faster than tech power up lending my setup as on par or faster than the gtx 1630. it is nice to see such a great improvement from the integrated graphics the integrated graphics are capable of playing many pc games without issues though there are several cases where you have to do some fixes to run fairly demanding games decently you have to tune some settings to fit within the capabilities of the GPU. But we are talking about better than PS4 level graphics in some instances at higher frame rates, which is pretty impressive. This solution allows me to continue making videos with DaVinci Resolve, despite not having a GPU for the past several months. The integrated graphics solution is also easily cooled. Even with the 25% overclock, the highest power consumption I've seen when running the most demanding games was only a little over 100 watts for my entire machine. The only negative I can think of is that it lacks XMX units, so you have to use DP4A for XCSS. Other than that, the experience has been great. I wonder what the future holds for integrated graphics on the desktop.